All right, guys. With my bestie today. Best broski. That I wanted to ask to be my girlfriend. No, no. Mom. What? Are you fucking serious? Please tell me you're lying. Please. Psych. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jacob, you fucking got me, you crazy son of a gun. Oh my Sorry. god. I can't imagine ever being your girlfriend. You're crazy, Jacob. This video better be fake. I know. So I set the camera up. This you got me good. What the fuck? Literally, what the fuck? Oh my god. Yeah, I know. Bro. <laughs> that was. You're a really good actor, by the way. I thought you were so serious. Hmm? Holy I know. Shit. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, yeah. This yeah, video gotta be fake. Right. Let's go. Ain't nobody friend zoning me like that, bro. Ain't nobody friend zoning me like that. I'm letting you know right now. I got too much pride. <laughs> if you come into my crib and you sitting on my bed, we fucking. We fucking. Ain't, ain't, we fucking. Ain't no coming to my crib to hang out. You not one of the bros. Nah, we fucking. I'm, I, I know y'all gonna look at me like, what? Oh, grow up. But hey, them folks young. Nah, I'm I'm growing. I'm married. When you grow and you get married. And you shouldn't be having female friends coming over. But when you young, they, what the, they about 19, 20? Oh, don't, don't know. No. I don't, mm -mm. <laughs> We fucking. Of your life. Being married to my wife for 51 years. I'll never f forget her. We were a perfect couple and uh, enjoyed each day together. And when I lost her, I lost my life. So I'm just existing now till I go and join her. And I'm 93 years old, so I don't have much time left, I'm sure. But if, if you're lucky, you'll find a woman like I did who will never argue, never fight, never do anything against you, and she'll love you and you'll love her the rest of your life too. It's all you can ask for is a good partner. What's been the most memorable time period of your life? Being married to my wife for 51 years. I'll never forget her. We were a perfect couple and uh, enjoyed each day together. And when I lost her, I lost my life. So I'm just existing now till I go and join her. And I'm 93 years old, so I don't have much time left, I'm sure. But if, if you're lucky, you'll find a woman like I did who will never argue, never fight, never do anything against you, and she'll love you and you'll love her the rest of your life, too. It's all you can ask for is a good partner. Damn. I ain't gonna lie. I wasn't expecting that. I almost shed a tip. Old head is speaking facts. Speaking facts. But um, they must have had a really good relationship because... Growing up, all the old couples I've been around, they couldn't stand each other. Like, my grandmother and grandfather, oh my God, they could not stand each other, bro. They used to sleep in separate rooms. I remember this, you know what I'm saying? God rest the dead. But they used to sleep in separate rooms. My grandfather, I don't know if it's because of old age. My grandfather used to always think that, that she was trying to kill him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, he used to uh, always say this. you got acting like this now, but when I'm gone, when I'm gone. He used to always say that shit, bro. They had a very toxic relationship. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where things went wrong. You know, I've heard like bits and pieces. So I don't know if my grandpops, my grandpops was a handsome guy. I never realized how handsome my grandfather was until um, I went back to my country and I seen pictures of him when he was younger. And, like, my grandfather was handsome, bro. So I don't know if he was out here uh, slinging wood. Because that's a bit of the story I heard. He was out here slinging wood. But, um, yeah, man. Shout out to them. The goal is to grow old together. That's the goal. The goal is to find somebody to grow old with. Now all this nonsense. Everybody want to find somebody to take care of them. And 
Okay, so most of you guys follow me because I do a lot of children's book recommendations slash talk about teacher stuff, but there's like 5,000 of you who follow me for my date night videos with my husband. Long story short, when my husband goes on business trips or we travel alone together, sometimes we will go down to the hotel bar separately and pretend we don't know each other and it's super fun. We get to hit on each other. This is where we're at right now. No worries, by the time I post this, we will not be here anymore. Anyways, on the plane ride here, I decided that I would just go ahead and pretend I had never met him in my life. And you guys, it was so fun. It was like a three hour flight. We were sitting in first class and we just flirted with each other the whole time. And then he asked me where I was staying, which just so happened to be the same hotel. Who knew? So he asked me out to dinner. And we just, like, continued that for the rest of the evening. And now I'm off to another adventure. Okay. okay. I'm not gonna lie. That's actually kind of fire. That's a fire idea. I might need to do that spicing my marriage up. The way we be in here beefing. And I feel as though things have gotten real, uh... Things have gotten real... What's the word I'm looking for? Mundane. Routine. You know what I'm saying? Things have gotten so routine, man. And and we might need to do that, too. I feel as though we, me and her might need to do that. Because certain conversations we have, I feel as though she don't know. Or she might have forgot who I, who I, you know what I'm saying? Who I, I am. Or who I used to be. She might have forgot who I used to be, because I, I used to be cold out here in these streets now. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. The, the young ladies used to love used to love your boy. She would disrespect me like I don't got no damn game. Me and her, we might need to do that. <laughs> I I fucking hate protesters. I saw one clip where there was protesting. They blocked an interstate. Imagine you work at a job and you on damn near probation. You on your last point. Because some jobs use a point system. You on your last point. And because a motherfucker don't like the way the government is handling things with the environment, they decide they're going to block the highway. So they saying, fuck you, fuck your job. So now you lose your job. You don't, We don't know what she needed that money for, dog. Now, I know protesting and marching was, was one of Martin Luther King's weapons in, in the civil rights uh, movement. Back in the day, civil rights movement, they was attacking these people's pockets. They was attacking these people's pockets. They, gonna, they said, we're going to boycott. We're going to boycott this. We're going to boycott that. And black folks stood together on that shit. Nowadays, let's say you have a situation where, uh, I forgot, what it, was it Louis Vuitton? Or one of these uh, fashion, high-end fashions, they made some clothes depicting black kids in a not-so-good light. We talked about it on social media for about two weeks. And then that was it. If you do your research, you'll realize that the African-American community, they buy the most. Most of these fashion companies, you know what I'm saying, most of the clothing companies, most of these things are geared towards African-Americans because they know that them folks are going to spend some money. They know we're going to spend some money. But at the same time, we have all this power. And don't know how to use it. We don't know how to say no. 
We don't know how to say, yo, you know what? You disrespecting me. All right, I'm going to stop buying. We don't have to go out there and protest. Like when they went out there and protest for George Floyd, did y'all know that the George Floyd situation actually made it worse in a lot of cities? I was saying this shit to somebody, right? And I'm going to say it to y'all. Y'all tell me if y'all agree, y'all disagree. So I live in the city of Atlanta. City of Atlanta, great city. Um, after the protesting for George Floyd, right? And y'all, I don't know if y'all saw what happened to the CNN building. Y'all can look it up. The city never really went through that shit before. But after that protest, bro, these kids got a taste of looting and just being wild. That's when all the car break-ins and, like, the car jackings, that's when all that shit went up. Now, people is blaming COVID, but it's not. It really wasn't COVID, bro. Because during COVID, this wasn't happening. But immediately after folks started going out here and protesting for George Floyd, bro, that's when that shit started. The way you got to handle situations like that, you got to shut the city down. And not shut the city down by protesting. Shut the city down by, yo, we not buying shit. We not, we not spending money on shit. We not going to Walmart and spend no money. We not going to Target and spend no money. We not supporting no business that's not speaking up for us. And that would mean majority of all these businesses out here. That's how I look at it. If we going to protest, fuck all that walking around and, and with signs and don't spend your money. If black folks don't spend their money for a month, they shutting the city down. 